Hello, and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, I think I've got a juicy one ahead of us. I have <laughs> Bella French, who is the co-founder and CEO of ManyVids.com, which is the number one clip site for sexy uh, stuff. Yeah. How would you say it? Adult? Adult content, uh, uh -huh. like amateur videos. Oh, so like anybody can do it. Anybody. So, okay, let's get started of how you got started in this, because obviously the adult industry has changed so much in the last 10 years or so, which I think has been great that women can be webcam girls and they don't have to leave their house and they don't have to meet strangers and they don't have to go to Northridge and do a bunch of gross movies like they had to do in the 90s, which I was, but I was obsessed with that back then too, of just how things worked. Um, so tell me how everything came about and how you got in this industry and okay. when. Okay, so um, I studied fashion design and as a young designer, I opened two stores in Montreal where I was selling my clothes and I was not doing good at all. I was really And how bad. old were you then? Uh, the first store I opened, I was 22. Now, how did you open your own store? Like, don't you, didn't you need, did you have like partners or funding? No, so basically I had six thousand dollars in the bank account and I just took this insane risk basically if after the first month I wasn't selling anything it was bankruptcy <laughs> so for the six thousand you're able to secure a rent and buy enough product to sell so I had okay so what happened is that I created a collection previously to opening my store and I had a ton of clothes that I was giving to different stores and they didn't pay me mm -hmm. and they just like gave me back the stuff so I had ten thousand dollars of inventory and then a six thousand dollars investment to open the store and basically I put it all together and just took that crazy risk and it worked out worked out meaning like I survived but okay. I was like not thriving and I was struggling financially wow. a lot um, I operated that first store for four years then I went to business school for two years and after that I opened a second store okay and I decided because the first store I had so little money I thought that's why I wasn't successful the second store I gathered two hundred and fifty thousand dollars like uh, student loans, credit cards, line of credits, and like young entrepreneur, uh, uh, how, how do you call that? So you had like, a debt of 250 is what you're saying. Basically, I, I invested okay. 250 and then out of nowhere, there was a flood within the store. There were apartments on top of the store. The water tank broke and there was water everywhere and it was like total loss. But I was insured up to $50,000. Mm -hmm. So... I have two hundred thousand dollars of debts. Oh my god! And I don't no know store. what and to now do. store nothing. Yes, it's just like all right, you got money to pay back now, and um, I didn't know what to do. I was super desperate. I have a conversation with Sed, who's now my boyfriend mm -hmm. and the co-founder of CEO uh, of ManyVids, and he tells me, "Have you ever heard of webcaming?" And I'm like, "Now, what year is it?" So that's 2011. Okay, and. I'm like, no, what is that? I'm intrigued because he tells me I can make a ton of money. So I go check it out and I'm super insulted and very shocked. And I'm like, are you fucking crazy? I will never do that. I'm too good for that. You know, like I'm smart, blah, blah, blah. Um, and two weeks after that phone call, out of pure desperation, I created an account on a cam site and started camming. And I realized really, really fast how I, my judgments towards like sex workers were so wrong and it was like not what I thought at all. It was a lot of really smart women and like entrepreneurs that were doing their thing and entertaining and just doing really good. And um, it's basically the best thing that ever happened to me. While I was camming for three years, I discovered that there was a lack within the industry. It was really hard to sell my videos. It was like a whole way of doing things. That and was what and what were your videos of? Was it just you like looking sexy and masturbating, or was it with other people, or what? It was pretty much just me masturbating. Okay. Yeah, and then I think, and was it real masturbation, or do you just fake it? I mean, how many times do you have to masturbate a day to with all your webcam people? Yeah. So I mean, you don't come every single time, but. <laughs> I would come for sure, but then sometimes it's for the show. Yeah. 
Because, uh, or else you're going to last a, an hour. And, and you're had out. you ever really kind of faked it with boyfriends and stuff before? Have you ever, like, kind of put on a show for a boyfriend before you started webcamming for people? Or did you just kind of fall into it and just make it up as you go? I don't know. I faked it before. Yeah. I think we all have. Yeah. I mean, at one point it feels almost like, is it not normal that I'm not coming? Like, when you have sex, you're supposed to have an yeah. orgasm. Why is it not happening? And, yeah, I faked it before. Yeah, so then it was not hard. I mean, I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> so when you started to do the webcam, and by the way, it's like what, you know, like in this in this day and age of like the sex trafficking and everything, and mm-hmm. still women being so taken advantage, and this is like the worst it's ever been. On the other hand, there is this industry, the industry has made a way that you can do this not be on a street corner, not need a pimp or a Heidi Fleiss or anything like that. And it's kind of interesting that there's two complete extremes in 2019. Oh, yeah, everything changed. Now um, sex workers, online sex workers are in control. They decide what they want to do, how they want to film their videos, how much they want to sell them for. And they don't have to do, like... Before you would go and work for a production company, right? You had to do so many, like sign up to so to do so many movies or so many scenes per month or per year. Then you have to go to those conventions, and, and of you, course, commission off of all of it. Someone right. would get a portion, or you'd only get paid a flat fee or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and then you would have to do things you probably don't want to do because, or else you won't get that contract anymore. Mm-hmm. Now you do whatever you want. Um, like on many vids, our top models, they make around like $40,000 a month, which is really great. And some of those girls just do masturbation videos. So they don't have to go anywhere, meet anyone. It's super secure. There's no Safe. STDs. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's great. And they can thrive within the adult industry under their terms, which yeah. is super cool. And because it's extremely popular now, the whole clip side thing, now sex workers have a stronger voice because now they're important. Their content is important. So we there's more respect, which is really good. Yeah. So, um, okay, so you started to do it. And were you like, do I even have lingerie? Do I have to buy lingerie? Did you like set up a little s- stage behind <laughs> you as you're like looking at the camera? Like how often did you do it? Like did you have regulars? How did it work? Okay, so I started really ghetto style, just my computer. I didn't even have a webcam or lights, and it was on my bed. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a while, and then after that, I started to buy more equipment, but I never had a stage. Like, my Mm -hmm. stage was my bed. Um, I would do it about, like, four to five days a week, and every time I would go live, it would be about five hours. Uh, I had some Now, when you're doing this, do you... Are you... Do you, are you looking at the guys or do you don't have to look at the guys? No, you don't have to. You can, okay. There's an option to open a cam. Mm-hmm. So you open his cam, but it's very rare. So I And the only look. reason you would do that is if that person then was upping their price or paying yes. a little extra. Yes. And have you ever opened it because someone's paying more and you're like, I, I don't fucking care. You're too gross. I'm going sh- to close <laughs> it. I liked looking at nothing. I would rather look at nothing, but yeah. it. I did open it maybe like... 10 times it really it was rare and I was never disgusted it's just like all right and they would usually just show their penis like they don't show the whole their whole body or everything yeah. but I mean it is what it is have you ever had um someone that was uh, your customer or whatever you want to call it their significant other like reach out to you and be like oh my I know that my man has been going to your site all the time or anything like that I never had that no I, I'm sure it happens. Yeah. What, what I had was, I don't know if it's true, but it would happen that members would say, I'm here with my wife and she thinks you're so hot and stuff like that. Like a couple adventure. Only, so like, only like a positive thing. Yeah, I okay. had that. There was a lot of negativity as well, but mm-hmm. it was mostly like... Guys. Where do they write the negativity? Like on your screen? Like, on yes. an inch, like you would do a live Instagram, you see that? So it's a feed. Uh-huh. There's a feed and they can write whatever they want. And that's how we communicate. Uh, so I had the choice to either write or talk. And mm-hmm. most of the time you end up talking. It's easier. It's faster. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that feed, that's where they would start to say stuff that can be mean. But we get, we're get we so used to it that it doesn't affect And how does anymore. the money work? So, okay, okay. I okay, explain how it works. 
for okay. how would someone how would you make money off someone that then wants to see you as based on what and how much time you spend and what so anyone can go and look at a live stream for free uh, as a cam girl you have something called a room topic and on that room topic you say what you're going to be willing to do for the tips you receive so for example i would say i want 100 tokens to show my boobs and that's the equivalent of five dollars for me now they call them tokens is that like bitcoins or whatever or is this or they put in their how does it work so it's not bitcoins but it's like the currency of the cam world okay it's, it's basically money Okay. It's just instead of saying five dollars, it's a hundred tokens. And then the company then gets the money off people's credit cards to then put yes. it in your like monthly bill or whatever your check. Exactly. Okay. So, so we're paid twice a month. Okay. Depending it well, me on that specific campsite and on many vids we pay twice a month, but there's other places that it's just once a month. Okay. And so, yeah, so I, I'm gathering those tips for that ultimate goal at the end of the night, which is I'll masturbate as soon as I reach like 2,000 tokens. And then so that's why you're building up to that and then you masturbate. And none of these and the people don't care that it's not just for their eyes only. They don't. That's no. that's almost more exciting that let's gather the let's gather the troops <laughs> so that we get to the masturbation quicker so there's, Come on, everybody, there's join that. in. A little but bit, But can yeah. someone... Okay, so someone's going to tip you $10. But Joe over here, he's only throwing one token or whatever. But Joe still gets to see? Yep. Oh. That's how it is. But there's something else <laughs> called, like, a private show or a group show. Okay. And then a private show, that means, like, uh, a member will take you private, and he's paying per minute. So it was, like, 60 tokens per minute. And that's private for him, and so on during that period of time is. And just so, what? How much eyes. is sixty dollars? Sixty tokens is it? Sixty dollars? So sixty tokens is like, I don't know, three dollars, something oh. like that. He gets a private. He gets a private show for three dollars. Yeah, but as cam girls, we don't just right away get our clothes off and start masturbating. Okay. There's like a period, you know, before you get to that place. So you start talking and usually when members, they bring you private, they bring you private for a longer time, longer period of time. It can be like 10 minutes. I've had privates for two hours. And after that, you go back into your public shows, which is the fact when anyone can tip. And if even if you don't tip, you can get to see the show. And then you go back there and you work your way up to the, the goal. Now, are we ever worried that like it sees like that your cousin or something would be on there and be like, holy shit, that's my cousin <laughs> or or anyone, you know, or someone from high school or has that ever happened? Uh, if it has, I'm not aware of. OK, but there's something really cool where I can block regions so I can say I'm from Montreal. I'm anyone in Montreal can't see me. That's great. Right. Is that on all of them or just your site? No, so it's on our site, but on any other site. Oh. Yeah, it's, like, really important. That's for really important. Yeah. Because then you're like, well, so what if everyone in Ireland, you know, if everyone in Ireland sees me, who cares as long as they're, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, you just want to block where you know people. Exactly. <sighs> but then they can travel and see you, but that, but, I mean. Come on, you really think someone's going to go driving around? No. When there's 10 billion other cam girls? Exactly. 10 billion is a lot. <laughs> do you have, did you like, so did you go and like, what, so then as a cam girl, when you do your taxes, do you get your computers a write off? Is all your lingerie a write off? Like, does that still apply? So it, I, I guess it depends where you are in the world. Okay. And you need to have a company. Like, if you're registered as a company, you can write those things off. Okay. But if it's just, like, your name and not a company, that doesn't work that way. Got it. All right, cool. So then how did this, so then you did this for three years and you mm -hmm. became famous in the world. Well, I mean, in the cam world, I was known. Yeah. Yeah. I had, like huge boobs i was platinum blonde what do you mean this these are not your boob the, you change the boobs they're smaller now did you get the boobs to because you were a cam girl or you already had them i already had some so like so implant implants yes yes but 
there were uh, like 600 cc's. Uh -huh. And then I started to cam and I saw how popular it was and I liked big boobs. So I brought them to 800, which is what I have now. Okay. And then I went completely crazy just because I was so caught up into that world and I went to 1200 cc's. Now what is that, a double D? What is that? Oh no, that's like a G. Ugh. It's really big. And when did you realize that was a mistake? It took some time. I liked it. I, I really? Liked, yeah, but it, it was really difficult on a day-to-day -day life, you know? I had to cover myself up or else everyone's looking and everyone is always shocked about the fact that I have... You know, where, were your fam where was your family in all of this? You went from owning a store to, whatever, 1,200 cc's, double G's, and sitting <laughs> on your bed all day. Yeah. How did the family take it? So the family's not really around at that okay of my life yeah they feel like i completely lost my mind so they weren't happy so how did they find no. out when did you reveal it to them so i always say that moms are detectives and yeah. that's what happened my mom just discovered it and she's told me like i know what you do and she wanted me to stop right away she wasn't happy about it and uh it took a really long time and that was when you were how old when she discovered it so i started camming at 27 years old i'm 38 now um, so I think, I don't know, maybe a year and a half in, so close to 29, something like that. And what do you think, the, did just, you know, since now you have your own company, like what would you tell someone that wants to do it? Do, can anyone do it? Like, I mean, maybe not 80, but like, do you feel like there's an age that's too old or, but old, but, or is there a desire to have like a cougar type or what is it? There's something for everyone out there. It's crazy. No, like anyone can do this. It's really just a matter of having a really cool personality and being present and want to communicate with your fans. It has nothing much to do with beauty. Obviously, if you're really not good looking, you might not attract a lot of people, but it's the full package. You right. Yeah. Definitely different types is what you're saying. Absolutely. Like different body types, different colors, skins of color, a different age. We have models that are well into their 60s and mm -hmm. they're doing great. So, really? Oh, yeah. And were those women in their 60s, were they former industry people? Are they like old playmates? Or are there some women in their 60s that have never even been like a hooker light, which is a term I coined, which is kind of just like girls that go on like trips and stuff for a handbag. <laughs> now, there are people like that that get into it that have never done it, and now they're just starting to do it like later in life. So there's a story I heard about a woman that lost her husband, and they had like a really active sexual life. They would have sex every day, mm. and she was obviously extremely sad about the loss of her husband, and she started camming to feel that connection again with sexuality, yeah. and she was like in her 60s and she had never done this before and she said it really really helped her so there's stories like that and then there's stories like uh, women in their 20s that were models and then they go into a rough patch and they're older now and they want to try it out and it works for them yeah yeah and um okay so tell me about this netflix documentary that you're doing Oh, yeah. So I just finished uh, doing a bunch of interviews. I mean, it's not official where it's going to go, oh, okay. but yeah, we, we just... So you know, just did a documentary? We, we just wrapped it up. And yeah. what it, what's essentially is it about all this? It's about like the positive change within the adult industry and where things are going and the importance to understand that there are sex workers out there and that they're like good people and we need to stop judging them and shaming them for what they do. And do you think that in this world where people can have their girlfriend be a webcam girl and and consider her a girlfriend even though she they've never met, I mean, do you think that do you like think there's a issue with the future of people never leaving their home, never leaving their home? You're a webcam girl, never leaving your home. I feel like I have a connection to a girl because I'm seeing her on the webcam every day. Like how? Are, do you have any fear that people are never going to leave their homes? Because I do. <laughs> when you're a cam girl, you cam all day, every day, like when you're really into it and you have no life outside of camming. So it right because now... Because why? Because it house. becomes a little addictive and wanting to it make is. that money. Yeah, It is very addictive. And there's also the whole system of how things work. If you're not online for a period of time, your score goes down and then your ranking oh. goes down. So... You want to stay up. You it's have like a Yelp review. Yeah, you have to be out there active all the time. And 
Yeah, and then the guys, they come back home because they want to see their cam girls and they stay home. So I agree with you. That that will become a thing. Yeah. Okay, so now did have um, webcam girls ever been aware of, like, other webcam girls and be nasty, like, jealous and mean and try to, like, steal their clients somehow? Like, watch me. Why are you watching her? That was my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Okay. So, um... I remember having, there was a specific girl that looked r- like me. We okay. looked alike. People thought we were sisters. So obviously, like, my fans would most likely like her fans. So then there was a thing, you know? And it was always, like, if my, like, precious fan or the one that's closest to me, if I would have known that he went to see her, I wouldn't have liked it that much. Um, but it was always, like... I knew she was there. She knew I was there, but there was no attack or anything like that. Oh, okay. But there are some models that go for one another and they just like become mean. And I find that very sad because we should support one another instead of like hurting yeah. one another. But um, I saw a documentary a few years ago about okay. a webcam girl. Um, I think she had a boyfriend, but it was like an open relationship. But she had one guy that was just extremely dedicated to her and this and they finally met she went out there and it was just very awkward like she was like what what the fuck did i do like why did i meet this guy and she knew what he looked like and it wasn't like a surprise and she was down for it and they filmed it and it was just i don't even know that he was happy about it either it's yeah. like, have you had anything happen where people meet their top client or whatever? It usually happens at conventions. So okay. that's a safe space to meet someone because there's security and, like, it's a place for that. And where are these conventions? Like so Vegas or? There's one in Vegas. There's a major one in Vegas. There's some all over the world. There's some in Colombia. There's some in uh, Romania, uh, L.A. There's the Exhibits convention. Well, it's not a convention, but it's a place where everyone can meet. There's some in Berlin, Germany. And that's where it's the best place to meet someone. But it, it, it is weird when you've had that online connection with someone. It feels comfortable like that. And yeah. then when you get to see them, it's like, Ew, I don't have a computer in front of me. I don't have this form of protection or safe space. So, yeah, I can imagine it must be weird. And so you don't know of anybody that did, like, actually fall in love there's stories about it for sure. There's some cam girls on our platform that met their boyfriends through camming. I think oh. there's two stories I've heard like that. There's one, unfortunately, they're not together anymore, yeah. but it does happen. It, it's rare. And so, and what about, you know, do most girls, if they're in a relationship, the boyfriends don't care or do they have to try to hide this career from their boyfriends or if they're out there dating? Obviously, it depends on the relationship. I've heard uh, one of my friends who is a cam girl and still is, one of her ex-boyfriends didn't want her to cam at all, and he kept shaming her. Uh, my boyfriend was really cool with it, and I know that there's some guys out there that find it even super sexy that their girlfriends are doing that, and they mm-hmm. have like all this charisma and all those fans. It really depends. But obviously, if you're a cam girl or a cam boy and your partner is not, like, behind you and supporting you, that's going to be too negative. You need to get rid of that relationship. So with the cam boy, is it mostly all gay guys watching the cam boys? Initially, <clears> yes, <throat> but there's more and more straight boys camming. Because there's girls out there that want to feel that connection, Right. Too. Or straight guys camming and they don't care, right? Yeah. What do they that. care? They don't. There's a lot what of guys What do they care guys if gay guys are looking at them? Yeah, exactly. It's like yeah. male strippers. Most yeah. of their customers are gay guys, and yeah. it's fine. Yeah. So they'll be a male stripper. Like, they'll do Thunder Down Under, and then they'll, like, cam for the gays in the day. Yeah. Gay for, gay for pay. Gay for pay. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you said that Farrah Abraham and Lydia Dupree, who is the home mentor who's been on my show, they have accounts on your, in your company. So how did you, yes. so when did you start your company? So uh, we officially launched in April 2014. Mm-hmm. So it's been uh, five and a half years ago. Oh, okay. And so we reached out to Farah just because of her sex tape, and we feel like she's a very strong woman, and we wanted to do a photo shoot with her because she's also very gorgeous. 
and uh, she agreed. She was really cool, super professional, and she was really up to this whole adventure and promoting many of it. So that was really, really exciting. And Lydia is someone I've been following for some quite some time now on social media, and I just love her honesty. And I mean, the whole mentor, first of all, it's the greatest name ever. Whole mentor, it's genius. And and again, in in similar to what you do, like she helps people whether they're going to be like you know, kind of a paid mistress or however you want to call it, or be a sugar baby or be a sex worker in this industry. She has all these tips of like, again, how to be smart about it, how to save your money, how to protect yourself, which I think is great. Yeah, I agree. And I've seen videos of her addressing personal issues. And I was just, that's incredible. Just yeah. this honesty, wanting to help other people and putting herself out there. I thought it was brilliant. And she's very smart. She's yes. a go-getter. She's she's a strong businesswoman. So yeah. I can't wait to meet her. Hopefully this year and, well, next year in January. Yes. Oh, good. That's great. So, yeah, with Farrah Abraham, when she came on my show, you know, she had such a, um, there's been so many stories about her walking off of TV shows and walking off of radio and podcast shows. And so when she came in, I'm like, I don't want you walking off. Like, you tell me if you don't want me to ask you something. She's like, no, ask me anything. And I thought she was, you know, really great. She was on time and she totally promoted the episode. Oh, yeah. More than 99% of the people that I've had come on this show. She's amazing. Like over and overly like pushing it and being great, which is what we want. Like in all of these, you know, internet industries, you need people to tag and let them know about you. So... I find, I, I think that's interesting. And then sometimes a couple of people would write like, oh, Farrah Abraham. I mean, she, you know, had a sex tape or she had a mold of her asshole made. I'm like, who cares? who cares? I'm like, how many people have had a mold of their ass? A lot of people. She was a teen mom at 16. It wasn't like she gave up her medical degree to like make a mold of her asshole. And even she did. She could have been a doctor. She could Who have cares? been whatever she wants. She's really smart. And I totally agree with what you said. She was yeah. on time at the photo shoot. Extremely yeah. professional. Like, she promoted us everywhere she went for, like, a while. And yeah. we were always like, oh, my God, she said that about us. She talked about many of it. That's amazing. I have nothing else but good things to say about her and yeah. Lydia. And, I mean, incredible women. That's great. So what what else do you want to tell me? What what other thing would you want us to give people tips or what to do or what not to do or what if they are considering it or what if, what if someone wants to kind of stop? Like what about have what about when people have wanted to stop? Is that hard to do because it is such easy addictive money? Yeah, I think that if you're planning to stop because you want to get out, you have to get out. You shouldn't stay and do something you're not comfortable with, but you should plan it. You know, like put money aside and know what's going to be the next step for you. So that's important. And then if you want to try it, only do what you're comfortable doing. And there's people on many of it that don't remove any clothes. Do they, they're just doing like stand-up jokes and stuff? <laughs> Wish. That would be hilarious. That would be really cool. I always like I when I first started doing stand up, I I wanted to like write this. I wanted to do like a sketch because I thought it would be so funny if like all of a sudden some girl shows up at a bachelor party and the guys are like, yeah, you know, and she's like, OK, so actually I uh, broke up with my boyfriend. Like just starts doing like really hacky, bad, like female comedy. And I'm like, what is this? But that would be. See, that would, that would be a funny sketch, which is me just, like, I want to just test out my material, you guys. Well, can you, sh okay, I'll show, like, a half tit in, like, you know, oh five God. minutes. Break down menu vids. <laughs> Break down the internet, actually. <laughs> yeah, um, but, okay, so you're saying, like, yeah, there's, what about couples? Do couples do webcam stuff? Yeah, there's more and more couples. There's a very famous couple that works on many vids, and they do trips all around the world, and they film like their content everywhere they go. It's really well made. Really so what is it like? Trip advisory meets webcam. Like they yeah. like go to little locations. Like here is a windmill and sawling. <laughs> now we're gonna go, uh, you know, go down on each other in about five minutes in the hotel room. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, they love traveling. <laughs> That's not even, yeah, that, that's really what it is. They love traveling and they go all over the world. And that's what's amazing about webcamming and clip world is that you just need an internet connection. And yeah. there you go. 
So yeah, it's a, it's a cool place to be. It's fun. If you want to explore your sexuality or if you just want to upload whatever vids on that platform and try to make money, it's, it's cool. Wow. So what's next for you? Mm, right now, what I... Do you I'm, enjoy fashion anymore after your traumatic experience? No, and I think it shows. <laughs> She's wearing sweats right now, which yeah. is very cute, though. Your sweats are cute. You gave me a really cute oh, sweatshirt. thank you. Yeah, I, that's what I wear every day. I have, like, a bunch of those hoodies, and that's all I wear. So you don't do the webcamming anymore? You run the company? Yeah, I've, I've done two cam shows not so long ago, about six months ago, but I'm so busy with the platform right now and just building it that I, I don't have time to do it. I miss it sometimes because it was cool, that connection and just that thrill and that excitement of getting tipped. What about like identical twins and stuff? Do they do people like that? Oh. Or is that kind of gross, like sort of incestual? I know that they're sisters that do their own thing. They don't do videos together. Okay. I haven't seen twins. Oh. It has to exist somewhere. Yeah. I, well, but, I mean, there, were, yeah. there have been porns like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying that your boyfriend who's here, who's the co-founder, I said, oh, where are you guys from? And you said, you know, Canada actually is the, 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 has the most porn companies. What were you saying? So actually where we're from in Montreal, it's where there's the most powerful tech companies in the adult oh. industry. So s production is still very much L.A. This is where it's Production at. for like actual, like it's anyone doing little movies anymore i mean i it seems like that would be so much work and so much money for like time versus the money that you know like in the 90s and early 2000s there's a lot of interesting documentaries about the porn industry then which happened in in this part of the north of where we are which is like northridge chatsworth area and there used to be these like you'd see if you want if you were into porn at the time You'd see these famous porn stars like walking around, getting their Starbucks, and you'd go. And you'd see, you'd be like, "This girl has enormous tits. <laughs> she's probably a porn star, but she's at Target, you know." And um, and that's what. But they would be doing these movies like out by these pools with this like rock waterfall or whatever. And like, do those? Does that stuff still happen here, or no? Because of the rules with the condoms and just how difficult they make it for us to do any business here. Well, it's just obviously the tube site era that started to offer content for free everywhere killed a lot of big production companies and now they don't have the same budget that they used to, but there's still a bunch of production going on. At the time, like before that, 10, 15 years ago, there were some contract stars that would make a ton of money and they would become superstars. There's still some very famous porn actresses, and they are superstars, but they're Are not... they camming now? Um, Probably. Not all of them. Oh. Yeah, they don't all cam. It's like a different mindset. Okay. When you go on set to shoot a porn movie, you're like... A star. An actress. Right, so maybe they like that star feeling. Not doing it all themselves, like... I. You know, and they have to set up their own shit. Yeah. You're like, no. <laughs> you know how it is. You have to organize everything yeah. and, like, come up with fun games to make more money or entertain their fans. And so, yeah, it's there's a, a, a production part of it, and you're responsible. Like, you shoot your own content. You're going to edit your own content. You're going to promote it. Like, porn stars, they go on set, they do their thing, and then, like, there's a machine behind them that takes right. care of everything. Like, does Vivid and all that still exist? It still exists, but it's not what it used to be. Okay. Yeah, and actually, it belongs to a Montreal company now. Oh, it does? Yeah. That's juicy. So that guy <laughs> doesn't own it. What's his name? I, I don't know. Steve I don't remember. something. Oh. Yeah, he's he's not in the... Well, I'm not sure if he's not in the business anymore, but he's not the owner of Vivid oh. anymore. Oh, that is interesting. All right. Well, this was very, very interesting. And um, tell everybody where they can, like, find you or if they're interested or what. Sure. It's I'm basically on Twitter, Instagram. It's at Bella French CEO. I also have uh, my MV social on many vids. It's simply Bella French once you go on many vids. Your what social? You're just... 
social media so it's it's called envy social what's that it's the equivalent of a little twitter on many vids because it's very sad but a lot of sex workers are being banned from social media right now oh really yeah or they're being shadow banned just because of the fact that they're associated with the adult industry and instagram is becoming more and more like uh, putting crazy rules and they're just deleting accounts like crazy mm. so they need to have a place where they can actually promote themselves and that's what we've provided to right. them on many vids. Well, I think that's really good. And, in another, and on the other hand, being a mom, if everybody's on Instagram, that's maybe not where a webcam should be, you know, provide, if they're like showing their nudity and stuff and anyone could follow them. Like maybe there should be another platform for that. Yeah, there should be. You know, so I think that's, yeah. The only thing that is that is important to keep in mind is the fact that Instagram is massive. Right. And that's the best place to find your right. followers and communicate what you do. If you do it properly, you don't put direct links to any adult content. You always wear clothes and you just, like, people know you're a cam girl. Got but it. You look like a regular girl. It should be okay for you to have an And account. are those people now finding that there's things are being deleted or are they still okay? No, there's there's still some issues there. Okay. Yeah. But I understand also the fact that there's kids on Instagram and they shouldn't have access to that content where you see like boobs and ass. Like yeah. that, that's not okay. But there there should be a happy medium where at least they can stay on the platform even though they're associated with the adult industry if they follow the rules. Right, where they're like, You wanna see more? Go to this place. Yeah. yeah. They don't even, they're not, they shouldn't even do that. They just should just be like, hey, my name is such, and like put some nice pictures. And then it's for the followers to discover for themselves. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I like that. You're right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bella. This thank was you for really fun. Me. Thank you for my sweatshirt. <laughs> Boss babe, because that's what you are. <laughs> yes, and let me know when the uh, documentary is available to watch. Yes, I will. It'll be interesting. Thanks, girl. Awesome.